All right, people. This is another episode of Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Tonight's episode, pickup game. You know how Pat, you show up tell to me. the playground? Go with it. You got a water or a Gatorade. You just show up. It's a sunny day. And you didn't go with your crew. You just nah. show up. There's somebody with a ball and a bunch of heads And you're like, around. yo, you playing? You running today? Get up. And you just play a pickup game. Let's Word. go. And you know, the pickup games are tricky. Because the first few times up and down the court, you got to see what these guys have, right? He's trying to figure out who can go left, who can go right, who can dribble, who can shoot, who's going to run point, who's going to do the dirty work. Pickup games. So the premise of this, guys, is... Uh, Jay's, no been on the, Jay's been on the road. I've been on the road. We haven't spoken like we usually do. It's been a, it's been a rough time and an exciting time. We, we uh, did our event at Mini Bar, which was hugely successful. Big up and Jen and Mikey Palms. The reality is is that, you know, you got to recover. And, um, you know, then you got to take some time to reflect. And here we are. But listen, though. So I, we, we meet at the office to record and you know I, I say hi to my brother give him a dap give him a hug and tonight we got some rivers and with us he hands me some rivers royale grenadian rum word let me tell you guys something right if you run out of gas this will start your car I, you know I've, I've I drink i've drank whatever like i have some experience but i've never had this moonshine yeah, man. That Jay just gave me. So, look, we're going to wing it for you guys. Jay, what's the title? Pick up game. All right. So, Pat, we're going to start on a topic that I'm very fascinated with. I sent you this article. Jay, I got to interject. Interject. Because not to be rude, brother, but. Yeah, well, listen, you got the rock. The Yankees are playing, man, and Damn. we're down 3-1 in the bottom of the fifth. Mm-hmm. Let's go, Yankees. Please tie this series up. Make it 2-2 two to two so we can, you know, see if we can go on to the World Series. Please, yo, I New have to York, just mention. Truthfully, and this is, yo, if you're not from New York, peace and love to you. But New York, truthfully, needs this title, and I'm going to tell you why. From the standpoint of our fucked up mayor, and forgive my political bullshit, I try not to get involved with that stuff, but... From the standpoint of uh, of where we are as a city and where we were, we need something serious to pick us up. We need a ticker tape parade. We need something to lower the stress in this fucking city like you would not believe. So, Yankees, my boy Aaron Judge, he is the truth. He is a natural. You got Didi, Gary Sanchez. But look, let me give you another angle, though. When Jeter retired... And, you know... And what a legacy. What correct. A legacy. But I just want to point out, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. I, I just want to say, people, teams lose great players, and they don't compete like we're competing right now. Word. So that being said, at least we're in the mix. And to be honest, there's no shame in losing to the Houston Astros. Who's the best team in baseball, like on paper. No doubt. No but doubt. that being said, I'm with you. Let's go get it. Now, Jay, let's go in. All right. So... There is a phenomenon that has taken over recently, and it's something that I don't understand from a standpoint of manners and etiquette. So, I was raised to treat people a certain way, and I have evolved beyond the golden rule. I know the golden rule that people respect, uh, you, do, you do unto others as you would have others do unto you. My golden rule is if you treat life like gold, there are no other rules. But there is this thing called ghosting. And it has taken over not just in relationships. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh -oh. I'm gonna say something completely unrelated. You literally just stole the ball from me, but go ahead. I stole the ball, but it's totally unrelated. But I gotta do it for my true hardcore hip hop fans. Hit it. Ghostface killer. He's one of my favorite rappers. Like he's not gonna be called anybody. He'll never be one of the greatest. Like, like no one's gonna no, say he's was, the greatest. He was but, a niche rapper. But I gotta tell you, he made an album just like the last month. I forgot the title, but 
Ghost is like 12 for 12. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all his albums, and I, I, I got to say... From a productivity standpoint... This is my... Cheat. Yo, if I ever get to meet Ghost, I'm just going to dap him up. He's beast mode. You mentioned ghosting, and I had to just take it totally left. <laughs> yo, nah, like, yo, Ghostface rhymes like he's making $10 an hour. Like, he rhymes like... Yo, you just called him a barber, dude. No, nah, no, nah, not even. What I'm saying is he rhymes like... He's such, such a purist. Yeah. He means everything he's saying. Like, you never get the impression that Ghost... No, is, his conviction is all... Yeah, he's not rapping to, like... Because he cares what you think. Like, he's he means every word yeah. he's saying. And that is... Well, I tell you, that yeah. is my dude. No, nah, he's he's hardcore. He in, truly, just wanna, know, and that's another thing is that, okay, so now we get into terminology here with this whole thing of ghosting. And hardcore is something that you had not heard recently except for the porn industry. Hardcore is a word that came out of the late 80s, early 90s in terms of being true in a way that you're not just speaking the truth, but you feel that shit deep down in your bones, past your heart, in your gut, in the bottom of your fucking spine, right, right above your anus. That fucking little Cossacks area, and it just goes up into your and back and neck, into your cerebellum. The reality of hardcore was some shit that people faced where, yo, they were robbing the mailman to pay for their kids' yo, in, similar. In general, day to day, you come across like, when you're running errands, you come across people? Yeah. If you work a nine to five, you come across coworkers. If you're an entrepreneur, you come across come across your staff and your clients, whatever. You come across people, and ninety nine percent of the people, or some other high percentage that you come across, you feel they're full of shit. Yeah. So when somebody comes at you, and they're direct. Yeah. Whatever the content is, whether you agree with it or not. Yeah. There's something about that that you appreciate. Yeah, man. Yo. A sidebar, I, I have to bring this up only because, again, on the standpoint of hardcore and what you're talking about, I'm not going to give this guy's full name only because we're on air and this is recorded, but about two decades ago, I met a dude named Ernie who was a part of the civil rights movement. He went to jail for 30 years for robbing the post office of $2.50. And it's a federal crime. So he went away for a long, long time for that. When you find out Ernie's story was the fact that he took that money because his mother was sick and he was only 17 years old and he didn't get out of prison until he was 40. And... The only reason why he did it was to pay for his mother's medical bills. That is hardcore. The willingness to go away and accept the responsibility for your actions. And, you know, while he was in jail, he became incredibly educated and he came out he taught kids in the poorest areas of Texas how to become entrepreneurs from the age of eight, fixing bicycles so that they could have a skill for the rest of their life to be able to make money with. That's hardcore. There's a lot of examples of it, man. Like, I just think, you know, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's not what you do, it's why you do it. Like I could rationalize, you know, a lot of things. You know, right. like, you know. So I'm, I'm going to steal the rock back. Let's, from let's, let's get into we'll, ghosting. We'll get into though. ghosting. Um, and I'm going to put a full court press on you right away. Have you ever been ghosted? Yeah, man. And, you know, the first time you get ghosted, it's like. What's you, that feeling? Well, if you have an ego, right? And okay. if, like, you're used to, like, not people being at your beck and call. But, you know, you you have had success with. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever it is. Whatever, right. So you're like, and the first time somebody just is not checking for you. Right. 
it it it's a jolt to your system. You're like, yo, she's not responding. Because at first, you're like, maybe she's asleep. Then you're like, maybe she's busy at work. If she has a child, you're like, well, maybe she's busy with her kid. But see, at some point, and everybody has a different breaking point, but at some point, you're like, oh, shit. She's ignoring me. Yeah. She like, cut you off. Like, no one is busy 25 hours a day, eight days a week. Right. Right. If one thing about people, people will find time for what they want and who they want. I'm, a, I'm about to give you the best alley-oop ever. All right. Tony Braxton, seven whole days, not a word from you. Yo, can I just tell you, if Tony Braxton walked in here right now, I wouldn't even give you the signal. So the way it works, guys, I usually I flag Jay when we need to go to commercial or whatever. If Tony Braxton walked in here right now, you just walk off the set. I, I know that. Walk, I wouldn't turn. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even turn the mic off, son. Like everything's getting recorded on the spot. But anyway, so you asked, had I been? Of course, I've been ghosting and ghosted, and it's a shock to your system, son. When you like, when. When, you, when that that moment of truth, like if there was candid camera on me, right? The first time it happened, and it zoomed in on my face, and the not the first time it happened, the first time I realized what was happening. Yeah, you're like, oh snap! Like this person I, is not talking to me on purpose. So so let's look at it from the person who's ghosting. Do you think this is an ego trip? So you know what? There's probably two angles, at least two. It could be that you're yellow and you're coward. Because it's cowardice to not check somebody, right? Because some people are very direct. Right. And they'll reach out to somebody and be like, listen, I'm not feeling you. I'm not checking for you. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to hear from you. I'm never calling you back. Please leave me alone. There's a little bit of bravery and moxie with that, right? And then some people are like, I can't, I don't have the the backbone to say how I really feel. I'm just going to ignore the person so they get the hint. Right. But the other side, I guess that's really three angles, is the person might be ghosting you because they don't feel you're worth the explanation. Like, they literally don't think the one minute is worth, like, the one minute it would take to tell you how they feel. Right. They don't think you're worth that. Right. So right. how, do they even know that though? So what question? How do you think the percentages break out? Like how many people you think fall in the category of coming out their face? Right. How many you think ghost because they're like, well, I'm afraid to tell the truth. And how many you feel like, oh, you know what? This person is a shoulder shrug. You they're know, not even I, worth. I want to ask the audience, our listeners, that question, and I would love to get the feedback on it. But I'm, 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 I'm gonna also throw this at you. Because, again, I want to focus on the person who's ghosting. The psychology behind being able to just shut somebody down that you have been communicating with for a significant amount of time. Because the whole idea behind ghosting is that you have to have a relationship with this person. And we're not just talking about an intimate relationship. This could be work. This could be friendship. Ghosting is that you have had a significant amount of time so basically, invested so in communicating with somebody, in a and nut you suddenly just cut it off. So hold on. In raw. a nut, in a nutshell, you're saying ghosting is a disappearing act. That's exactly. So right. like, it's not just not responding. It's it's you're gone. it's having regular communication, right? And then disappearing, like poof. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, so time out. Pause, pause, pause. Yeah. So, you know, let me get a, let me get a pass. Chest pass. Oh, dude, yo, you, you're going to get a spin move, bounce pass right so, to your chest. So, check it, check it, check it. The funniest part about people that Tell get me. ghosted is when they begin to say things like, <laughs> like they begin to send texts or emails and say things like, I hope you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been trying to contact you. And, what happened? And... I'm worried, and they do. And then they do this. Just let me know you're all right. <laughs> you know, like that's like the last level. It, it, the call for help in those <laughs> texts, and then the worst part about it is that 
unless you have like uh, the iPhone text messenger where it lets you know that shit has been delivered and the person's looking at it or not. So the whole read receipt thing with emails, you know, on text. Wow. You don't fucking know based on the cross-platform technology with a lot of these things, number one. But number two is the fact that, again, the audacity that someone has to be able to just cut you off based on a length of communication over a significant amount of time that has been very, very involved. You spoke about it in terms of, you spoke about it in terms of cowardice. And I asked you if this was an ego trip from the standpoint of, they're literally trying to be like, who's in charge, motherfucker. And the psychology that it takes from a standpoint of a lack of respect for anyone and anything to be able to just go to somebody. But Jay, check yeah. it. Check this Give out. It to me. The psychology on so that's the psychology on the end of the person doing the ghosting. The ghosting, correct. But the ghost e, right? ghost e, yo, Check their, their mind fucking so, on a whole so other listen, level. So listen, listen to this, and you can have like, you can be so official, like Word. you're the hot girl, you're the official guy, whatever. But when you get ghosted, the sense of humility. So you're sitting around wondering who's fucking her. Like think so. Yeah. Think about this. If you're doing like right. picnics, dates, Broadway plays, whatever, right? Like yeah. just you're having a great time and in your mind, you're handling your business in the bedroom. Things are going amazing, right? Right. And then poof. She's gone. She's gone. So now, again, so there's, there's the whole trajectory. So it starts out with, oh, she didn't respond to my text. Then you do start doing dumb shit like turning your phone off and on again to make sure your text went through. Right. Like, you're calling the, your, your cell phone company like, is everything all right? Like, right. all that nonsense. So let's say you go through that. Then it's like, well, I hope she's okay and all that nonsense, right? right? right. Then you check this next level, Are Jay. You alive? Jay, you call her friends like, have you heard from Dolores? Right. Because <laughs> I tried to, and the friend's like, oh, yeah, I was with her last day. We went shopping. Like, right. You're like, oh, okay, all right. All right yeah, right. I, I'll talk to you later, right? So then... After all of that, now you're sitting up. And you're like, is she with somebody else? So you went through this whole gamut right, 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 right. of emotions. Being concerned about her. Right. Suddenly realizing well, that let me just say this. she ain't got a fucking care about you. Everybody has a spidey sense, a, a gut feeling, a right. tingling sensation. You knew all along she was fine, homie. Right. But you were <laughs> worried. Right? Yo, if y'all heard that in the background, that's the sound of Jay pouring more liquor into his glass. <laughs> no, but anyway, so now you're like, well, who's she with? So now you do the dumb, like real dumb stuff. You drive by familiar, stalking. you drive by familiar stalking. places. St uh, are we stalking? It's stalking. It's you stalking. drive by the place where you know she goes, yeah, whatever, man. whatever. So now... Now, you know what she does? Like, so one and night... The worst part about it is that you're officially a corn stalker. Oh, you're trash. Yo, you so now, now you're you go stalker. about your business, your workouts are affected, your job is affected, you can't think straight. Listen to this. Not only that, even up. if you had other girls, now you can't even focus when you're with them. Right. Here's the crazy thing. One night, you happen to fall asleep. You wake up the next morning... She sent you a text. Hey. And that's it. Dude. So now you're like, yo. <laughs> yo, ghosting. That's yo, the ultimate mind fuck. It's the ultimate brain fuck. Yeah, no. It is. So think about it from a standpoint of mental health. So you have somebody who has the ability to literally not respect 
anything in terms of anybody else's needs or wants. They cut off all communication regardless of what you're going through and they're saying, I need my own mental space, right? Whatever it is. And the truth is, is that... Hold on, time it, I'm sorry. I, don't lose your go thought. Go for it, baby. Mental space. Yeah. Is that code word for it's not you, it's me? In a lot of cases, it is. Now, it's a poor excuse, but at the same time, think about it. How many times... Have you wanted to block somebody, but you didn't only because you knew that that's just cruel and unusual punishment, right? But that person who's willing to block somebody that they have a relationship with, that the other person's dependent on them for a certain acknowledgement, for a certain number of communications on a daily basis... And suddenly you cut it off because you're like, I can't deal with this anymore. Or, I know if I don't cut this off right now, I'm headed down a very dangerous path. Jay, I want you to ask me, what is the best response to ghosting? Pat, what is the best response to ghosting? There's two. There's two. One that I prefer. Okay. First. What is the most valuable response to well, ghosting first? What people who initiate the ghosting would say, be honest. Tell me how you feel. That's the worst thing you can do. And what I mean is the person who's ghosting you has essentially slapped you in the face. So the worst thing you can do is leave a message like the following. Hey, I'm wondering, I've been wondering where you were, how you're doing it, if you're okay. And now I'm to the point where I realize you're doing this on purpose. It's not cool. It hurts my feelings. Blah, 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 blah. On the surface, nothing wrong. Okay. Let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the other side of ghosting, which is what you have just touched on. How do you respond to ghosting? We'll Let's pay right some back. bills. All right, we're back. Pat, where were we? So what I was saying is, so are the people that perform the ghosting would probably say, yes, it's good. Tell me your feelings. Why? Because you're just feeding their ego. Right. So while on paper and per like lifetime movies, it's good to express yourself. Mm-hmm person who's ghosting you is trying to play you. Right. So the correct answer, as soon as you get ghosted, go about your life. Because one of two things is going to happen. The two of you are are never going to speak again until you guys bump heads somewhere in the street. Or since they didn't get what they wanted, you would have reversed and turned the tables. I need you to pass me the rock. Go ahead, man. Hit you in stride. All right. I'm coming from the free throw line on the opposite side of the court, and I'm coming down the middle of the lane. It just sounds familiar. We'll get into that another day. The difference here is that I got a three-on-one, and there's more than two options. So... The first thing to understand, if you get ghosted, this is a power play. And that is a very hard thing to accept as someone, whether it is a a business relationship, a friendship, or an intimate partner. Why is this person making a power play? What did you do that caused this? That is the hardest thing to look at. Because all of us, from a standpoint of... Pause. That's a great point. You are forced to think by human nature. You're just going to re revisit all your interactions. Right. And you're going to wonder... Because you, 
you were coasting. You thought things were going well. That's exactly And you're right. going to wonder, what did I do? Meanwhile, you might have done nothing. In fact, you might have done everything right, which was the problem. Maybe you should have been an asshole. Or maybe you should have been... Imperfect? Imperfect in some way. Or maybe you were too imperfect. You were the right amount of imperfect. And you didn't understand that this person was looking for a variable. Is another maybe... How... Give me a number. Give me a percentage. How valid is it that this person got blown away by somebody else? Intentional pun there. Whether it's an Idris or a Selma. Less than 1%. So in your, your, so your belief is it's something that the person who got ghosted did or didn't do? Correct. Really? Yes. I'll drink to that. That's some different shit. I didn't expect that out of you. So, so the reason why I say it is because we don't have control over the influence or impact we have on other people. Whether it's positive or negative, you have an impact on the person that you're interacting with. And you don't know what they're looking for, number one. But you don't know how they receive what you're doing, number two. So you could be an incredibly positive person, and that person could be incredibly negative, and they need your positivity, but they don't know how to receive it. You could be an incredibly negative person and that person could be incredibly negative and they love your negativity. But at the same time, something doesn't feel right. So it's is, good to is be timing told. really everything? Is that, really, is that really what it comes down you know, to? No, timing is a bitch, man. Because on one hand, it could be everything. On the other hand, it could be nothing. You don't fucking know. There's, there's this... Immaterial, material force. I don't know how to describe it other than this is where we get into what they call transcendentalism, um, transmutation, metaphysical. There's something that we cannot see that is something we can feel, like a vibe. I'm going to tell you what it is, though. Give it to me. We're animals. And I say that because we're, we're sophisticated animals. Yes. But we're not that sophisticated. Right. Like... Human beings, we, we've created all these paradigms and all these things. But essentially, you know how like in the wild, an animal will put up their hind legs? Right. Essentially means I need to mate. Right. Right? So we have all these things here. Like we have monetary systems and caste systems. They're and physical constructs. Right. And, and, but, but innately, fundamentally, yes. we are animals. And I say that to say because the person who's attracted to person A comes to person Hold B. Hold the rock. I got the rock. Hold the rock. I'm coming at you with defense right now. All right, let's do it. You can trap me in the corner, son. The, the, I'm going to get it. Is, I got handle. I'm getting is, out of it. Yo, son. this is a triple team on your yo, my, I can dribble B. I get out of it. Go yo, ahead. The reality of what you just said, if somebody is coming at you from the standpoint of I see your physical I see your primal but the reality is that you're just speaking from this human nature being a part of the animal kingdom give me your intellect in terms of how you recognize your own animal instinct and It's not an evolutionary thing. It's it's a But Jay, I gotta steal the ball. I wanna bring oh, it back to holding the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding the rock. But I wanna bring it back to timing though. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is human beings we incorrectly put each other and sometimes ourselves in boxes. And you don't really belong in a box. Correct. If you're a dynamic individual. And right. what, I, what I mean by that is a person is with someone. In fact, before they met, person, somebody went to person A and said, I know this really great guy. He is the lead 
He's a partner at this law firm, right? So now think about it. This person's initial introduction to this other person is what they do for a living. And if you think about it, it's kind of corny. Right. Like something is wrong with that if you think about it. Like I think it's cool to be successful, but if you think about it like just on on a, like a innate level, who cares, right? right? But so this person, let's say they meet and they get together and it's all good and she loves his position in life. She's attracted to his position of power, so forth and so on. Let's say she cheats on him and ghosts him for two weeks. Right. The person she cheats on him with might be the polar opposite. Like, he might be an out-of-work construction worker. But they felt the connection. So what I'm saying is about timing being perfect... At the time when she met the partner in the law firm, she was probably looking for that resume checklist love. But when she met this construction worker, this out of work construction worker guy, he might have just made her laugh. It might not have even. It might have been primal, but you know he he might have made one comment. He might have given her directions. He might have made her laugh, but something appealed to her. So what I'm saying is, I want you to give me a quotient. I want you to give me a percentage. I want you to give me a an importance level on timing is everything. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll address it. This has been Fun and Truth with Black and White with Pat and Jay. We'll be right back. All right, we're back with Fun and Truth and Black and White with Pat and Jay. Pat, you stole the ball from yourself. Listen, I got to just... And tell then the you audience. slam dunked it on me on a 360. I'm, yeah, I, and I'm hold on, hold on. Totally disrespected. So I gotta tell the audience. So audience, you guys, we're not doing simulcast yet, where you can see us. But um, we have cues and different things we do in the office, and um, that commercial break was actually a little bit untimely because our laptop needs to be plugged in, like. <laughs> We were about to lose battery power, right? So <laughs> Jay's flagging me, and I was completely ignoring him, right? On and then, which, yo, you were in your zone. But the funny thing is, so, like, big shout-out to De La Soul. When we do our mic checks, we always are like, plug okay. one, plug right. two. And Jay could not find the plug <laughs> to charge the laptop. So this episode was about to end totally fun, abruptly. Fun but where we were, where ahead. we were though, Word. yeah, where we were, timing versus attitude. Talk about it. How important, I was asking you the question before we went to break, how relevant is timing? Given the example that I just gave you, because right. again, people want different things at different times. There's some, you know, there's some times, and just for the simpleton listening, you might leave the gym and want a protein shake, but you might leave the gym and totally undo your workout and go have a pizza, right? Yeah. Because what you want is different at different times. All right. So timing is a bitch. And it's, this is a funny fucking thing because, again, from the standpoint of where we started with ghosting and why people do it, the the, the reality is, is that timing is such a integral part of why and when people do shit like this because understand that one person is either fed up or realizes that they've got no control and they're using their only card to get control so they could be doing it because they're fed up and they're just like you know what this is what your ass needs it's an extremity or not not an extremity it's so extreme that I call it an extremity but it's just extreme. Yo, that was level. the ultimate remix. <laughs> when you said extremity, I was like, where the hell are we going? But go ahead, go ahead, continue. So, so it's extreme on such a level that it literally is like an extremity. The, the reality of what makes a motherfucker think that I'm going to cut off all communication from this bitch because they're either driving me crazy in a bad way, or they're driving me crazy in a good way. Oh, hold on. That's a great take. So we talked about cowardice. Right. We talked about you're irrelevant. I'm going to shrug my shoulders and leave you alone. Right. But I want you to speak on, or we can speak on, the person that 
meet someone that blows their mind so much that they feel they can't handle it, so they bow out quick. Right, they bounce. They're, they're like, yo, d- nice to know you, motherfucker, but you're my dream. I can't live in this reality with you. So in th- does that person have issues where they can't handle what they fantasized about? Or is that person intimidated by the prowess or excellence of the other person? Like, what I think, would I, I think that you just you asked that question with the reality that it's both. Think about it. If you have a fantasy and somebody makes your fantasy reality, sometimes you can't handle that shit. Are you saying that maybe the fantasy is even better than you thought? Yes. In other words, if you have a fantasy and somebody lives up to that fantasy, sometimes for you that's a mind fuck simply because you're just like, yo, now what's my fantasy? Stop and think about that for a second. You have a dream that you're going to be with Idris Elba. And then all of a sudden, Yo, you're with Idris I got a, Elba. Two episodes in a row. I got to let you know, we're giving this dude Idris a lot of press. Yo. So, yo, after today, until I, I, heard, I heard he can DJ, until he DJs a party of mine, right? Fuck that after tonight, we're not... <laughs> 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 nah, but you know what? That's a that's an ill point. Though. Like, like, seriously, that's a very interesting point. So, I think one of the... I think you touched on something. One of the beauties of fantasy is that it's fictitious. That's right. So once it becomes reality, your inability to handle that. Right. So basically, are you saying, what I think you're saying is, people fear what they don't understand. They hate what they can't conquer. I got to pause and say that that's a Nas lyric from, I believe, the It Was Written album. Or the I Am album. So Way I, I, before ghosting ever existed. So I, so I stole that. But anyway, right. but I just think like people can rationalize someone who they deem to be unofficial or someone who they deem to not meet the zenith of their standards. But if this fantasy person comes around. Surpasses it. Or surpasses it. It's like. What do I do now? Right. Because you might have been used to dealing with these schmucks. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so uh, again, one of the things that I recognize, uh, we have to go back to the question of timing versus attitude. So, the timing of ghosting is the fact that the person who is exerting the power to just cut everything off on someone else Think of their audacity. They do not care about you anymore. Hold on. Pick up games. That's That's the episode. That's right. So you're with somebody. Yeah. It's coasting along. Yeah. Things are what they are. They pop up and prove to you over a significant stretch of time. Right. We should be a few days. Right. Okay. That they don't give a damn. Right. One thing about pickup games is you adjust on the fly. Word. So this guy that you thought you picked up on your team that was skinny, you find out he can play in the post. Right. This short guy, you found out can can shoot the rock. Right. This tall guy, you find out is weak. Right. Right. So you adjust accordingly. Right. In this real life the situation, dude who wants to be the point guard can't dribble. Can't <laughs> can't dribble or has no vision. Right. Okay. In a relationship. You're coasting along. Things are cool. You get blindsided by this. Right. Now you have to adjust your game. What do you do? All right. So if you're the leader on the court, the first thing you do is you understand who you are in the situation. So go back to the, the court example. Let's say that you have a dude who wants to be the point guard but can't handle the rock. And you got a center who's weak as fuck. But you got... Money in the corner all day, right? The first thing you're going to do is you're going to let... For the non-athletic listeners, he means somebody on the perimeter, on the baseline, who can shoot the ball. Exactly. All right, continue. So, thank you for that. I mean, (laughs) not everybody plays ball. I know we think I know that we think ball is life. Word. But there's some people that never bounce on in there. Most people are like, what the fuck does money in the corner mean? Right. So... The, the standpoint is is that you recognize that if you don't let the dude who wants to be the point guard get the ball out of bounds, 
he's not going to contribute at all. So you got to figure out a way to get the ball from him very quickly because the minute he puts it on the ground, he's a liability. The second thing is, is that your postman who really can't play in the post, you got to figure out a way to get him involved before he shoots the rock. So the point is, is that you've got to call the play before it happens and understand how to get your boy in the corner, the ball, before they're double teaming him because they know that he is going to knock it down all day long. And for those who don't understand, knock it down means that wherever he is on the floor, he's going to put it in the basket. So... Translating that to teamwork in a relationship where somebody's ghosting you, you have to recognize, all right, this person needs space. That's first of all. And that in itself is really hard to do simply because if you've been reliant on this person's communication and it's been a consistent part of your day, not having that, there's suddenly this incredible absence in your life. And how do you fill that void without that person? The second part of that is the fact that you have to recognize that for this person to make this type of decision, to suddenly cut you off completely, you are that important in their life. Because they can't do that unless you have such an impact and such an effect on this. So listen, let's bring it, let's bring it all the way left. Is what will make you feel best to go sleep with somebody else? Okay, I'm going to say something here that's going to shock a lot of people, but no. Listen, Jay, for every 100 hate emails you get, 76 are directed at you. So just keep going. Like, All fuck right, it. Cool. Like, So understand that I'll, I'll live with your 24%. But the the point is, is that the the slogan that the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else is actually terrible advice because the first thing you have to understand is you not anybody else but the second thing you have to understand is that if somebody is throwing their power card on the table of ghosting you that's their only play so if you can figure that out, the energy that you can absorb back from that reality and what you can do with it, you can change that person's life in a way because I understand something. If somebody ghosts you, they're still checking on you. They're just not letting you check on them. So... If you realize that that person is just looking to see whether or not you're stalking them, if you're not stalking them, then they're going to be like, hey, wait a second. So listen, I got a take. It's not a hot take. Uh -oh. It's not going to sound that cool, but I think when you're in it, yeah, it's hard to see clearly. I can see clearly. <laughs> now the so what you have to probably do is holler. Sorry, that was a Jimmy Cliff line. Huh? You have to holler at your friend that Word. isn't involved because... What you just said logically makes so much sense. Yeah. But the person that's being ghosted at that moment is facing other emotions like where is she, where is he, why haven't they responded? Right. They, they, the they have gamut. a level of concern right. and love. So you have and to reach out to someone. Things. Right. You have to pick a friend that's going to be honest with you, not the friend that's going to tell you what you want to hear. Right. You have to pick a friend that says something like, "F that dude." F that chick, you and I are going out, don't call him, don't call her. Like, you know, the person that reminds you that you're of value. And what I mean is, in a relationship, there's a balance of power. Right. It's a tug of war. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you realize it or not, whether you want it to be there or not. And too often, people convince themselves that the other person is the prize. Right. That... I am lucky to have that person. When in reality, they're lucky to have you. Right. Right? Like, even with sex, it's like, 
instead of thinking, I got them to have sex with me, you got to think, well, I let them have sex with me. Right. You know, like you can't, once you are viewing yourself as the lucky one, and again, I'm not saying you shouldn't appreciate who you're with, but I think there's a balance of power. So you need to, when you're in it, it's hard to think logically and clearly. I think you need to reach out to a supportive friend that can be honest with you. You know, I'm going to take the rock from you on this one. And whether I'm stealing the ball or you gave me an unexpected pass, I'm, I'm going to just say that you, you led me to the lane without knowing it. And now I'm going to take it, you know, un, uncontested. But my point is this. The the silence in a relationship is often the best time to reflect on what is a relationship really made of. If, you know, you've talked from the, the standpoint of an intimate relationship. If it's a business relationship or a friendship and suddenly you've been ghosted, it's no different. The reality is, is that if you have a a care or a concern for somebody and suddenly they disappear you're left wondering what happened what did i do wrong but you know when, what can i tell you something go ahead. Try, not, try not to lose your thought but right. i think it is different in one way in business yeah you're looking at a balance sheet right there's a good likelihood that you may not be emotional in business you might be, which is a bad situation, but there's a possibility that you'll look at it as cargo, as dollars and cents. In a relationship, I'm gonna blow your fucking. There's mind. immeasurable things like ego and love. Listen, and Listen, man, I'm I'm gonna blow your fucking mind on this one, and this is a full court press. As much as people would like to think that business is unemotional, the reality is is that unless you are a solo entrepreneur, as I have been for many many years. And even then, the reality is the decisions you make are always emotional. And it has to do with your gut feeling based on the vibes you get from the situation as well as what you think, not what you know. And what you think is often based on your experience of emotional, you know, consistency. And... For example, anybody who's been in business for a really long time finds bullshit in people who can't show up on time. It's just one of those things that those of us who've been in business in a long time understand. Respect for time is everything in terms of being in business. You don't even have to be fucking successful. But if you want to be in business more than a couple of years, time is your most precious commodity. Now... Going back to ghosting and whether it's intimate, business, or friendship, the reality is is that whether or not you like it, that shit is emotional because suddenly someone has cut you off and you don't understand why. And the minute that you don't understand why or you don't understand at all, your emotions take over. So you know what's you funny? like it or not. <laughs> What's funny is the Go ghost ahead. thing isn't really the issue. Like, I think people can process being cut off. People can't process not knowing why. You got it. That's 100%. So, when you think about the fact that this episode is a pickup game, and we just started with ghosting, and we really delved into it without any script whatsoever... What fascinates me is the fact that you picked the intimate and I picked the business and we wound up at the same place. And even more beautiful about, you know, again, interweaving the game of basketball and, and helping our listeners to understand not only why we love the game and, and sports in general, but how it relates to intimate relationships, business relationships, friendships. The issue of ghosting is a phenomenon that has to do with our current world ecosphere 
of social media and the way in which we communicate. We have more ways to communicate than ever. And yet at the same time, people are doing more power plays in terms of exerting power over each other in ways that we couldn't I'm gonna do. Tell you, I'm gonna tell you what it is. It's too much. And what I mean is, <clears throat> there's no time to be curious. For example, let's say there was a, a girl, someone you liked in school, yeah. right? Friday came. Yeah. You know, way back in the day, you weren't seeing them again till Monday. Right. Now, you have access all the time with this rectangular thing in your pocket. Right, 24-7, So, there's just no downtime. Right. So, as a result, five minutes now, or five hours now, is what two days used to be. Right. This word eternity has a whole new meaning. Right. Now, granted, it's a beautiful thing, but once it's abused or used for a power play... Yeah, the whole dynamic changes because the right. access to each other and information is a remarkable and fantastic thing. But when you're dealing with when you're dealing with emotions, you know, hand me the rock, dude. I'm I'm, I'm gonna hand you the rock coming around a curl, so that this way oh, you can't you can't fumble it out of bounds or anything. Like. Word up, okay. I, yo, I'm taking this off the fucking pick and it's a three pointer. So. Being able to recognize that you are in a situation that you may be uncomfortable, that you don't like, cutting off communication is your last resort. It should not be your first move. And because it has become so commonplace... I'd like people to understand that it's easily read now. And the thing about ghosting that people don't understand is that what it says about the person who's doing the ghosting is you've got no other move. But let me ask you though. So is it a weak move and for the for the very for the more colloquial Listener, is it a, is it some sucker shit? Like, do you, you know, want my answer? Yeah, I want you to tell me. Is it a weak move? Absolutely, absolutely. There you go. the The reason why it's a weak move is because if you have to go someone, that means that you can't figure out any other way to communicate that you have a problem with them or yourself. It would be easier even though it's harder for you it would be easier to say to that person it's not you it's me and that person would respect you you know more. what that tells me your ghosting is about you that's a hundred like and what i mean is you don't even have the respect like for yourself right like you can gain so much equity or again for the other side of our audience Pause. so much props Hold by on, just pause. keeping it real. Most people who are listening to us would would associate equity with a financial play. Talk about not it. Not understanding that equity is a value in any area of life that has to do with your investment. Your investment of time, your investment of emotions, your investment of spirituality. Equity can be any fucking thing that you think is of value. And no one's saying you have to give a soliloquy as to why you want to bow out. But, yo, communicate with the person. Listen, this is not working out. Even if all you want to say is, this is not working out, I'm moving on. Pat, what Say is, something. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to get dangerous here. If there was one thing that you could recognize and identify as a real quality or trait that differentiates men from women what is one thing from a value perspective that when you beat your chest as a man that is something that is 
identifiable as a trait that isn't some real man shit. I'm going to assume you mean real men. Yes. Real men say what they mean and mean what they say. 100%. It's exactly what I'm getting at. If you have a set of balls, you are going to say what is necessary. Whether you like the person, love the person, hate the person, it's not about them. It's about you and your balls to recognize what is important to be said at the table with the other person eye to eye. When you can't do that, you don't have a fucking set of balls. Because balls isn't about going out there and getting a fucking motorcycle and going 90 miles an hour. That ain't balls. That's fucking stupid. Balls is when somebody has a problem with you and you recognize that whether or not you did any fucking thing wrong, the reality is is that you got to work with this person. You got to deal with this person. You got to love this person because you're in a relationship with them. And you look at them and you say, you know what? I don't have to like you every day. In a nutshell, I work with you. In a nutshell, address your shit directly. Well, We're coming right back with I don't give a fuck and PSA of the day. This is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. And this episode is Pickup Game. Let's go. Who got next? All right, we're back. This is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. This episode is called Pickup Game. We've been freestyling. You know, Pat, before I get, get into my I don't give a fuck, I want our listeners to understand that the beauty of a pickup game is that you don't know who you're playing with as well as your competition. It's all about the beauty of the game. You have a ball, two hoops, a court, and you're getting to know the people that you're with. And we have known each other for 20 years. And this episode has literally been the next level of conversation in which we did not know what was coming out of each other's mouths. We didn't plan anything. Yes, yeah, next level. But at the same token, it's what we've been doing for two decades. That's like, true. We just happened to turn the mic on. And another beauty about pickup games is... like. Throughout, so a game is 11 at the typical New York right. park, right? Word. Throughout that game, you're figuring out strengths and weaknesses and of these dudes you don't know, Word. right? And it's, it's, it's a dope thing. And then if you happen to run the table and you play, you win four or five games and now no one can get on because yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And the same thing can happen in life and business and relationships. Let's go in. You know, just to feed off of that is that one of the things that – makes Pat and I who we are and why we're doing this together. We've both been in situations playing against each other as well as on the same team. But I just want to let the audience understand that we've been in games against each other where either one of us has been down by point game at least five or six points and made a comeback that the other person had to respect because no matter where we play on the court, we're both leaders and we find a way to get everybody else on the court to pick up their game when we don't want to lose. And that's why, you know, we have evolved to this stage. So that being said, Pat, I'm going to get real brutal here and say I don't give a fuck about Cardi B. And <laughs> no disrespect to Cardi B. I, I got to tell you why I don't give a fuck about you. And, and that is that I just saw the movie Hustlers. And believe it or not, I have mad respect for anybody who comes up from nowhere and figures out a way to make a life for themselves. But... At the same time, don't flaunt that shit in a way that makes everybody else feel like they can't be somebody too. And here's what I mean. 
you may have a body, you may have a brain, you may have some level of understanding of the world. But here's where, again, timing versus attitude. You got lucky at the right time because of your attitude and were able to manipulate the situation. There are a lot of people out there that they just don't get the timing that you did. They don't have the attitude that you do. That doesn't mean that they're not just working as hard as you are or harder and they want to be comfortable. And that word is often misunderstood, especially in terms of how we see it from BET and MTV and all the shit on Instagram today. It's funny how we went from Yo! MTV raps to Instagram today and people are literally throwing their dicks and pussies on the screen saying that I'm successful when the reality is what makes you successful is keeping that shit in your pants. And that's the truth. So, I don't give a fuck about Cardi B. Funny, kind of unrelated, but, you know, I don't, I haven't really been keeping up with her. I know she's doing very well, successful and stuff. Someone sent me a picture of her today in a bikini, like a few hours ago. Word. And I didn't even know her body was like that. She looks pretty good. But but to your point, you know, I get what you're, you're just saying overall. Let me tell you my PSA of the day. Fix your face and your fucking energy. Here's what I mean. Jay, my man, my listeners, our listeners, have you ever been in a situation a jovial or social situation and some person is there with some screw face or negative energy and you're like, Yo, no one wants that shit. Let me tell you something. When you're up, no one wants to be brought down. Like if you didn't come to the bar, to the party, to the bar mitzvah, to the communion, to the Domino's night, spades night, whatever. If you didn't come to the thing to have a good time, why the fuck did you leave your house? Like, no one needs that shit. Like, everybody has stresses in their life. Everybody needs outlets in their life. So for a lot of people, I would say the average person living in this country, that amount of downtime is minuscule. Right? Some of us are doing better than others. Some of us have a lot of downtime. But whatever the case, your downtime is priceless. It's so valuable, you can't put a dollar figure on it. So here you are with this downtime. You're ready to go let loose. Whatever that means. Let loosing for some is a strip club. Let loosing for others is shooting guns at a gun range. Whatever it is you do. You don't need somebody coming through with their negative ass energy. Yo, listen, if you're that miserable, keep that shit to yourself. Word. Fuck out of here. Nobody needs that shit. Like, you're not helping anybody. You're not helping yourself. And if your goal is to bring someone else down, all you're doing is pissing somebody off. Yo, go be alone, man. No one needs that shit. I need Word. you to I need you to co-sign that. Yo, not only do I coincide on that, I got to tell you a funny fucking story about it. So, I, I'm sure all our listeners and anybody who's not familiar with this, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed by. But Labor Day is the Caribbean Day <laughs> Festival in New York. Eastern Parkway is filled with 5 million people. And let me just say, I'm going to say this, throw this out there, and I mean to interrupt. Actually, I did mean to interrupt. The Haitian float is annually the best float. <laughs> Yo, I got love for all my West Indians, but the Haitian float is bananas. You know what? But go I, ahead, though. Uh, listen, I, I can't judge. I can't even say anything one way or another, but my point is this. In 2004, I chose to go to the West Indian Day Parade with a Rasta cap with dreads on my head. Now, here I am, a skinny 6'2 white dude motherfucker, walking through the streets 
with a Bob Marley cap, Rasta cap, with dreads on it. And these two Rastas see me, and they're standing by their car, and I'm with a whole bunch of West Indians, but they single me out, and they were like, pull up your cap. And I see them, and I'm just like, yeah, you want me to pull up my cap? And I pull the shit off, and I say, it's all love, motherfuckers. And they immediately smile and laugh. Because their perception was that I was this white asshole making fun of West Indians and especially the Rasta culture. And if you don't recognize when somebody is looking at you as a foreigner, an alien, somebody not a part of their tribe and they feel like you're mocking them if you're not aware of that situation and who you are boo on you because exactly as you say fix your face those two dudes were at the West Indian Day Parade and here's a white dude in a Rasta cap with dreads, having a great time with a whole bunch of West Indian people. And they're not putting two and two together. So the only thing I could do was connect the dots for them and be the equal sign. I mean, basically, it was a moment of truth. Because at that moment, your response dictated whether you were going to get into a fight. 100%. Or whether you were going to show them that you didn't mean any harm. That's exactly right. You know, I don't fault them for trying to figure out what you were trying to give off. And I don't fault you for correcting them on the spot, saying, listen, it's all love. Right. 100%. I mean, communication is important. And it's good that you had that response ready because I, I know you went well enough to know that was in your heart. That right. was real. Yeah. It wasn't fake. But at the same token, you were able to diffuse the situation because it could have gone left. Oh, it could have been very, very dangerous, and, and that's not why I brought but it up. But at least you at least you came out with yeah. good energy, though, at the end but, of the day. But that's my point, right. is that identifying the situation you're in and fixing your face, understand that that was as much about me as it was about them. In other words, these two dudes had it out for me because of whatever was on their mind. If I didn't have the happiness and the love that I did... And that, yo, that goes to every person Well, hold on. With me. To your point, you could have had the same response. If it didn't come off genuine, right. still wouldn't have ended well. Right. All right. So listen, this has been an incredible episode. Once again, this is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. To all our listeners out there, thank you so much. We love you. Much love always. Thank you for your support. All right. Peace out.